welcome back to Bid Nerds, your daily nerd out on the most interesting car of the day from all the automotive enthusiast auction sites. My name is John Polnick. I'm your host coming to you from the uh, the Las Vegas Container Park in beautiful downtown Las Vegas, along with my partner Michael Deeb coming to you from San Francisco. Michael Deeb, what is up? What's up, dude? Are we going to talk about a cool car today? Cool truck. Cool truck. That qualifies. We dig through all the automotive enthusiast auction sites and narrow it down to the number one most interesting car. That's uh, the best car from BAT, the best car, the most interesting. Maybe, maybe not the best car. I should qualify that. We say this a lot. It's, you know, our slogan, the most interesting. So there's a lot of cars out there that might be better or worse. We're not saying this car is necessarily better than the other one. But the most interesting car of the day, we find the most interesting car of the day, uh, the car that you are most most interested in knowing on how much it's worth. That's another really important thing because what we do is we make a prediction as to what we think the car will sell for or maybe, you know, just get bid up to. Uh, and then at the end of the episode, we tell you exactly how much it actually auctioned off for. Uh, so let's go ahead and get right to the most interesting car of the day. What do we got here, Mr. Deeb? New York, New yeah, York. Yeah, buddy. All this right, thing. in New York, New York, uh, is this 1994 Land Rover Defender 90. Uh, JP, what is the NAS? Is that North American? That would be North America. That is correct, sir. NAS is North American. Oh, you know what? I don't S. know what the S is, but uh, I know it's the NA is for North America. North America. Yeah. yeah. So anyways, there you go. Uh, with a five-speed manual transmission, this car is on Bring a Trailer, and it closes in 48 hours. Our vehicle, uh, I think most people are familiar with this. It's got the 3.9 liter V8, the five speed manual, uh, dual range transfer case, uh, four by four. This thing will go anywhere. 105,000 miles on the odometer. So it does have some miles. But this car, by all accounts, JP, looks like it has been absolutely enjoyed because there are accessories all over this thing. It's kind of the Ducati monster of the four by four world, um, along with like a Jeep Wrangler, right? I mean, like there's just, there's so many things you can do. So everywhere you look, there are bars and guards and accessory lights. Um, JP, you can probably better describe some of the accessories that are on there that would mean more to people that intend to use this vehicle off-road. I also think that that soft top is uh, <clears throat> an accessory and didn't come from Land Rover. Uh, it's just based on some of the comments uh, that are in the uh, in the listing here on BAT. One thing to note uh, in one of the comments that I was reading, the seller stated that when he got back uh, to the vehicle on Monday, he would take some photos that were requested and publish them. And today is uh, Wednesday and he has not done that yet. So that kind of bums me out when it's coming from a dealer and they say they're going to do something they don't. Uh, but other than that, uh, JP, I've always liked these vehicles. I've never understood why they bring so much crazy money. Um, it, it's just, you'll have to explain it to me why these are twice and sometimes three and four times the uh, price of a Jeep when you could get a Jeep to do all these same things for a fraction of the price. I, I get that they're cool. I love the bright yellow and I'd love to own one, but I, I'm not shelling out $100,000 for a 100,000 mile English Jeep. It just doesn't make sense to me. So anyway, here we go. There you go. Where are you at? Well, yeah, I mean, so to start off with all those accessories on here, it, it appears to me most of those, if not all of them, are factory items. So the, the, the side really? steps, the, the, oh, bull, cool. the bull bar, um, the only thing that doesn't look stock or certainly isn't stock are those, uh, LED the, head, the LED lights on the top. Yeah. Sorry, guys, I thought I had a picture queued up for you guys. Uh, you yeah, go. so those silly LED lights are definitely not, but that soft top is absolutely a, it may, now it may not be a factory unit. You know, the original one may have been worn out, but this is a uh, replacement that looks like a factory one. That, that's what right. they look like. Uh, it's, all, it's always been kind of cool that they had the roll bar kind of come through the top. Unlike a Wrangler, uh, uh, you know, an American Wrangler where the tops, you know, at least the modern ones, the tops are easy to take on and off. Uh, these soft tops are an absolute bear to remove I, uh, and put I, back on. The, 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 and the seller states that in the comments. What I yeah. think is really cool, JP, is that uh, a Discovery had those additional um, windows that were sort of in the top canopy so that if you yeah. were off-road, you could look up at like the treetops, things like that. And this soft top mimics that at least design language or or you know usability feasibility with uh 
um, a second set of plastic windows in the top of the canopy, the uh, soft top. And I just, as a guy who doesn't know these cars, just to see that, it's really cool. I think it's, that's a really neat uh, Yeah, you get idea. kind of what that stadium seating kind of feel when yeah. you're in the back. So it gives you a little bit more light. It's interesting that this one has a bench seat in the back where most of them have the, uh, the troop jump seats the, that are like facing one another. They'll have mm -hmm. like two or four seats on either side. Um, so, but uh, yeah, and you know, I, you mentioned like, what's it, why would somebody spend all the extra money for something like this over a Wrangler? Well, of course, if you go to any mall, you're going to see 50,000 Wranglers. You're not going to see very many of these. So, you know, why would you own a, a, a G body 911 over say, I don't know, what's a, what's a modern sports car, uh, you know, yeah, a three, a 370 Z or something like that yeah. or whatever. Um, so this, this is definitely something that you're going to stand out and, you know, show that you have some style, but more to it, it's not just style. This thing is all about utility. Uh, you know, Jeep Wranglers, as much of a fan as I am of those, um, having owned one up until just recently, like literally a couple of days ago, um, <laughs> you know, I've always said that the best two, you know, a pony and a 22, uh, the automotive equivalent of that is, uh, is basically a 911 and a Jeep Wrangler. Jeep Wranglers yeah. are just the best vehicle for the money. You, you really can do almost as all the same stuff as you can as this uh, Defender, but you know, look how minimalist this Defender is. The Jeep Wranglers, um, the modern ones, they're just a lot of plastic and a lot of chintzy and the design sensibility on the interior of a Jeep Wrangler is pretty gag me. It's pretty awful. This thing really goes right back to the 60s. Uh, you know, th this is a military vehicle that they put some roadworthy suspension on. And for the American ones, they put, you know, gave us a big, huge V8 that's kind of a piece of junk. Unfortunately, this engine is anemic. Um, you you got to put a bigger exhaust on there and open it up. And, and it, it's pretty fun uh, when you do that. <laughs> you do have torque. That's another thing that the Wranglers don't have is, is anemic and and crappy as this engine is, at least it's still a V8 and still has the does have that torque and feels crunk. like a V8, yeah. right? It has yeah. some poop. Uh, whereas the American Jeeps, uh, you know, they just have that minivan uh, V6 engine that just always sounds like it's going to break <laughs> all the time. Uh, it's just a hunk of crap. Um, I just, uh, you, just so driving anywhere in a Jeep Wrangler is terrible. Uh, a road trip in this may not necessarily be that much better, but you're going to look a hell of a lot cooler. Um, <laughs> And go through a lot more fuel. Now, here's the number one reason why you want a Defender if you're a Porsche, guys. The ignition is on the left. Uh, nice. And unlike the 911, the reason, so, uh, you know, Porsches, why are the, why is the ignition on the left? If you talk to a sales puke at a car dealership, at a Porsche car dealership, they'll tell you it's because of Le Mans. The racers back in the day would line up outside of the car and then they'd get in the car and it, it was Pretty easier good. to turn the ignition on and put it in gear with two separate hands rather than start it and then put it in gear. That is the reason it stayed on the left side, but that's not the reason it started there. The reason why the ignition is on the left side on a 911 and all Porsches nowadays is because when they were first building Porsches in dirt floor workshops with hardly any materials right after World War II, wire was very hard to come by. And so it was a shorter distance from a battery to an ignition, ignition switch on the left than it was on the right yeah so uh the, Por the porsche sales guys don't want you to know that they want to say it's because <laughs> of the racing thing that is why it stayed there but that's not why it started anyways uh the reason why it's on the left on a defender has nothing to do with racing because you aren't winning winning any races with a defender uh and it's not because they were trying to save money on wiring it's because if you look at this interior um you know, these are English vehicles. These are English military vehicles. So when they said, oh, let's deliver them to places other than England, they just took the whole steering column and everything and just moved it over. <laughs> so nice. if it were on the right, the, the it would be uh, in the place you would normally expect it. But in, since they just the moved it yeah. all over, <laughs> they just put it out, put it on the other side. Good to go. Whatever. Um, you know, air conditioning in one of these is basically a lever that opens a, a, a little uh, flap of a vent that brings air in these. They are These are not luxurious vehicles uh, by any sense of the word luxury. Uh, but I still, you got to love a Defender. Oh, man, I want this thing so hard. Uh, you know, and since we're talking about Defenders, um, uh -huh. there's another Defender from, uh, if you guys haven't checked out the Rami show, which is another <laughs> show that we 
produce. Uh, we wanted to share another defender that's very oh. similar to this one. Um, check this defender out. It looks uh, pretty much identical uh, to the one we're talking about. Uh, but as you can see, the way it's ripping down the road, um, it is not the same thing. This is our good friend Rami Mirza. Uh, check out the Rami show on YouTube. Uh, this is an LS8 swapped 800 horsepower uh, <laughs> Land Rover Defender that does donuts for days. Um, I mean, the v it is just the complete opposite of the one we were talking about. This thing is not stock. But look at that. You are not doing that in a stock <laughs> Defender. Has okay. he rolled that car yet? Uh, he is trying, man. But uh, before he rolled, he basically busted all the engine. You can see when he stepped on it, the whole front yeah, left front. tire just came off the ground. Off the the ground. whole thing is just twisting like a shoebox with no roof. Um, it is the most bonkers vehicle out there, and it's terrifying. If he offers you a ride in one, do yeah. not take him up on it. Uh, you might die. Anyways, back to the Defender that we're talking about. Uh, I sure love this color, clearly. Um, where do we think that this car is going to land at the end of its auction? Ah, oh, jeez, JP. I don't know. These things are bringing crazy money. You know, the, the, Again, the low-mile ones that are in excellent condition uh, are six-figure cars. Easy, easy six-figure cars. Um, but I think this one is just tempered down a little bit with the mileage and, and all the accessories and stuff like that. I don't know if that – does somebody pay extra for the accessories or they want one that's just as plain vanilla stock as possible? Um, I'm in the camp of wanting one with less. So uh, even though a lot of – a few of those things are really cool, I don't need all of that stuff on there. It's too much for me. So I'm going to go $85,000, and I think it sells at that price. Yeah, I think that's a pretty good bid, uh, D, because here's the thing. The boxy the boxy utilitarian vehicles, you know, Jeep used to basically eat everyone's lunch. They were the only company out there that had uh, anything that was like this, um, you know. The, and it was weird because Ford and Chevy and all those companies were just like, nah, we don't want that market. Um, Ford finally figured it out, and they came out with a Bronco. And their two-door right. Bronco sure looks a lot like one of these. So you can go buy a brand-new two-door Bronco. Uh, and have all the modern accoutrement. You can have safety features. You can have airbags. You can have air conditioning. You can have comfort. Uh, and they make one with a V8. Uh, you know, and it's going to cost you about the same. You know, they're about you know darn near 100 grand because they're still kind of hard to get. Um, and they're not as common as say the Wrangler is yet. But they probably as soon as they catch up on with manufacturing, you're going to see a lot more Broncos out there. Um, this car is still the cooler car. Uh, and if you want to be the cool kid uh, at the car show, this is the one to drive up in. Seinfeld has one of these. A bunch of famous people. Doug DeMuro is known for having one of these as well. Yeah. Um, but the other vehicle that kind of sits in this segment, the the Mercedes G wagon, um, oh, yeah. uh, you know, is a vehicle that kind of harkens from the same idea originally a military vehicle made to be luxurious the defender is not luxurious at all whereas the 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 g-wagon is uh and now there's a new defender made by land rover um but no one really likes it i mean it's actually a pretty darn darn fantastic vehicle but they should have just called it the new discovery and made something more utilitarian and boxy uh like the defender but anyways that's a whole other discussion um the reason why I brought up the, the Mercedes G-Wagon is I haven't seen a lot of Defenders, so I haven't lately going up on auction, so I'm not sure what's going on, but the G-Wagons are falling off. Uh, fuel economy is a thing um, yeah. that these uh, do not have. I mean, it's just the worst fuel economy in the world on these Defenders, and same thing with the G-Wagons, and you're definitely seeing G-Wagons. The, the older G-Wagons cool off. The, the, the new G-Wagons, the brand new ones, you know, the 2020, 2021s, the, the new style one, uh, you know, these, the dealership still can't get enough of them, uh, but the uh, even as for, even as early as the G63s are starting to feel uh, the pinch because uh, people are going, mm, do I really want to spend 200 grand on something that gets 12 miles a gallon or nine uh, <laughs> like this thing would? Um, yeah. So your bid was what 85 grand? 85 grand. I'm gonna yeah, I think that's pretty solid. Um, again, I'm going to go under you. I'm going to say, uh, because it's an East Coast car, uh, I'm going to say 79. I'm going to go just a little right. under you. I think your bid's really good. Uh, and uh, it just kind of depends on who's watching. If this were on, uh, is wait, are, we are on, what 
What auction site are we on? Bring a trailer. Bring we a trailer. are on Bring a Trailer, yeah. So yeah. Um, for a second there, I was thinking it was PCAR Market, so maybe I underbid a little bit. Uh, P- bring a Trailer is definitely where this is going to bring the most money. It's on the East Coast. If this were a West Coast vehicle, I definitely think it would be uh, it would do better as well. Although this is the vehicle to have in like Maine, um, yeah. you know, <laughs> this yeah. is you know, cool. uh, it's that type of rig. So we will find out exactly how much this Land Rover Defender, this North America Land Rover Defender, uh, actually auctions for after this word from our sponsor. <laughs> All right, guys, welcome back. Uh, We are now here to figure out just how much this 1994 D90 closed for uh, on its auction. Michael Deeb, let's get the reconciliation. How wrong, how right, which one of us was on it? (laughs) Well, you know what, JP? We both, um, you know, like when the cheetah's chasing the little gazelle and the gazelle turns left and the cheetah goes flying down the road? You and I both overshot this D90 quite a bit. So I really believe that this car uh, with that color and those options could bring 85,000. I thought that's what it would take to bring it home. You were a little more conservative when you said 79,000. Our car sold for $68,000 on 11 bids. So I would say my knee jerk reaction to that price is the fact that it's just over 100,000 miles and the fact that there are so many accessories on this car that maybe, now you were saying you believe a lot of those accessories were true Land Rover accessories. When I look at it, to me, it looks like it's it's littered in aftermarket pieces, but I don't know them well enough. But I think maybe the miles and the fact that it's got so much stuff and it's not, um, I don't know, just a simpler looking car might have contributed to that. Uh, at 68,000, I think you would agree with me, would you not, that it, at least at the very least, it's well bought at 68 grand or 65,000 in that neighborhood, I'd be a player for that thing. Um, The accessories don't bother me that much. They're not the way I would want it, but I would buy one like that if it meant I could save $20,000 and the miles don't scare me at all. I think these things are pretty bulletproof. So JP, what do you think about that price? By the way, you won. You, you, I was way farther down the road. You won that one. Well, yeah, I definitely overshot it. Um, Look, uh, you say you would be interested in buying it this way. Well, that's the only way you get one of these. This is a North America spec D90. They didn't come without this stuff. That's this is it. The only thing that's the only thing that this car didn't come with. If you went down to the Land Rover dealership and. 1994 are those silly led, LED uh, lights, yeah. yeah lights the lights on the front bull bar those yeah. may not be land rover lights but they're you know they're the simple they're the ones that you would want um yeah. they're round you know they look period correct whereas those stupid yeah, right. led things don't but that that bar around the windshield that goes uh-huh. into the top that's factory man that's the way that's they cool. come yeah. uh yeah. you know the the bars the sidestep bars the wheels uh, the bumper all that stuff, the brush guard that's all factory stuff stuff um which is i think what was kind of the appeal of these when they came out they were so cool looking they were so looking like they were ready to hit the safari but that said we kind of talked about that before the break too uh but all that said um huh, boy the market on these is definitely taking a hit um We've talked about a lot of other cars recently, and in other episodes, you'll be able to see us talk about, you know, say Porsches yeah. and other exotic cars. Um, but the cars that seem to be, if you want to call it, correcting most right this minute uh, are the big utility. Mm -hmm. SUVs, Uh, G-Wagons and Defenders are really, really, really softening. Um, This going at, what did you you say this went for? 
68,000. 60, yeah, man, that, that would have been a huge bargain uh, just a couple of months ago. And, um, you know, I was actually looking at one of these over the weekend before we recorded one of these. Uh, there's a mm-hmm. local dealership that has a just a fantastic one. Uh, it's white, but basically the same configuration um, and about the same miles. Um, yeah. And that dealership has it listed at ninety nine thousand dollars. So they're in trouble. Uh, That is that is now what would you call that in the car business? Distressed inventory. Um, Distressed inventory. (laughs) In the car in the car dealership, we call that a boat anchor. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. I you got to hope that the owner of the dealership likes that rig uh, because he is going to be driving it. Um, I I absolutely love these, but yeah. Oh, I do too, and I and I actually love the yellow. Uh, but that white one, JP, um, mm. that that shit is back a book. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. Now, this yellow one in particular would look great parked next to my speed yellow R8 Ooh, because yeah. these colors are about the same oh color. That would be oh such, a, such a J- sick combo. JP, um, yeah, yeah that would be pretty hot. Yeah, It'd be very Miami for you, but it would be really hot. <laughs> well, it is a little. It's been very muggy here in Las Vegas. Uh, <laughs> but there it is, guys. I think uh, it's becoming more of a buyer's market, especially in uh, these boxy utilitarian classic rigs, the D90s, uh, certainly the older Land Rover, uh, you know, the Series 2s and stuff like that, the ones that came before these that do not have all the whiz bang stuff. If you want something a little bit more classic looking, you're going to look for, you know, they. They've also, I think what might be affecting these two is fairly recently, um, they've legalized the import of the older Series 2s, which mm. are basically the same rig. Uh, you yeah. had mentioned that these are bulletproof, and that's also kind of not the case. This V8 is tr- uh, problematic. Really? Um, yeah, it is not Jesus. a good engine. It's it's uh, like we said before the break. It's yeah. unreliable. Way to go. Yeah, yeah right. you you, uh, <laughs> you don't really want to put yourself too far out in the desert <laughs> in one of these. Out, um, out there in the Mojave Desert, yeah. you need a fuse, and it's 116 degrees outside. Like, uh, well, I mean, but that's what makes it the North American thing right they brought it here they figured it had to have a lot more power and torque so they put this big v8 in the thing uh but you know look at discos of the same era you know they've got lots of little issues um lots yeah. of electronic problems uh this is a manual so that really helps out uh but the old JP, series twos had like four cylinder tdis or not even tdis they were just yeah. diesels uh yeah. with no power but they went forever yeah is that the same motor that's in a disco so uh i believe it is i believe yeah, I it is so, from too. the same era yeah, yeah. um so, you know, yep. there it is. Still really awesome. Or you could just go ahead yeah. and get uh, one like Rami's uh, and put yeah. an LS8 in it um, <laughs> and get 700 plus horsepower. Uh, little note on that one. Um, uh, he recently uh, busted all the motor mounts and transmission mounts <laughs> and stuff and may have cracked Try- the chassis. So, Oh, my God. He, it, that, that motor is trying to dislodge itself from the Land Rover. It's just trying to eject through the front, you know? Yeah, that so thing's much, in trouble. So that much thing. torque. <laughs> there are uh, six-figure price tags involved in getting that thing back oh. on the road. We will, uh, But we'll update that in another video. There it is, guys. Yeah. Another episode yeah. of Bid Nerds, your daily nerd out yeah. on the most interesting car of the day from all the automotive enthusiast auction sites. Thanks to our sponsors. Make sure you hit the subscribe, like, and notification button. And uh, check in tomorrow and see what tomorrow's most interesting car of the day will be. See you, no! dude. Get the word!